Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Royal News Network Saturday morning live stream. I hope you all are doing fantastic this morning. I personally had a bit of a rough morning. I was watching my parents' dog last week, my sister's dog, these last couple, or just started doing that, I think, yesterday. And we had a rough evening and morning. So I am sans a lot of sleep. I was actually taking a nap on the couch after getting up super early to take her out. So um, it took me a moment to kind of like oh, come out of the, the craziness. So I hope you guys are having a fantastic morning. And oh, so much to talk about. We will obviously be having a live stream tomorrow for Queen Marguerite of Denmark and her ab official abdication and then her son's ascension. And I hope you guys really can hear me and see me. My computer has been a little weird this morning, but, um, so we will be doing that tomorrow. And then I'm also working on an email kind of going over the, like the schedule of events. If you're curious, I'll send that out via my sub stack. I'll officially restart that next week. I've decided, um, just wait. Cause it's still been sort of slow with Royal news and everything. So we'll do that next week. Um, but obviously as well, we still have everything going on with Andrew, but we also have, although that's calmed down a bit, but we also have Harry's award, his aviation award, living legend of aviation. If the award wasn't so like, re like almost over the top in a way, living legend, like maybe, but it's like, dude, he's not a living legend. The guy has not done anything remotely interesting in aviation that nobody else has, hasn't already done. Um, and so, and so yeah, that's been, that's been funny. Uh, we obviously had the Golden Globes last weekend and Megan and Harry being the butt of the jokes and the Sussex stands a little bit going, oh no, 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 you're, they're just, they're roasting them. That's what they do. But, you know, a good roast is based in truth. So I think that's a little funny. Um, we also have as well, you know, questions over what the future of suits might hold for Megan. William did his first royal engagement of the year, we do have some royals getting back to work, but still a bit of a slow time of year because everybody's still kind of, kids are still on break and stuff. So uh, other, although I think most kids are probably going back at this point, but other school systems work differently. So let's go ahead and get to our first question we have from Gunita says, at, question, Angela Evans said, Megan was not invited to the Golden Globes. What made you feel she was? Maybe they called Megan and she was a diva and she never got the official invite. So there's a couple different things. And I, I put on the video that I did yesterday and I just put it in like a little bracket. I was like, this is just my theory. Um, You know, obviously, I don't know for sure whether or not she was invited, but I just feel like, why would you invite like the main cast of Suits and not really invite Megan just because Megan is obviously, regardless of what you feel about Megan, Megan is the biggest name of the cast by far. Um, in terms of acting cred creds or like credentials, I would say Gina Torres. Um, looks like Sarah Rafferty has had a good run. Gabriel, who played, um, I can't remember which, what his character's name was. Um, he's, he's pretty much only done suits. And uh, Patrick has done a couple things. So there's there's some who have done other things. But I mean, the main, main person who is of note of suits is Megan. So it did seem a little weird they invited the other cast members and not Megan. Because obviously, Megan is a big deal. And we've gotten two different varying reasons why she didn't attend. Number one said it was she had a previous commitment, which is silly. Like, even if you didn't get an invite, why would you say previous commitment? Like, what is bigger in Hollywood than the Golden Globes on that weekend? Nothing. Absolutely nothing is bigger. Uh, <laughs> and she's desperate for Hollywood. And, and I think they're getting a little desperate in some of their um, projects as well. And then you also have security as if they needed more security just for Meghan Markle. And I was like, yeah, I highly, highly doubt that. So, yeah, I think those are, I think getting those explanations. One of them was supposedly from an insider and stuff. But I mean, it's all in a way supposition, but I just have a hard time imagining them not inviting her. But at the same time, I think their invitation was not to her liking. I think Megan really wants, obviously, all the attention as much as it can be on her. And if she had to present as a group, <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> I think that would drive her crazy. <laughs> oh my goodness. I think that would drive her a little bit crazy. So I think that would be a reason for her not to go. But again, or they could have been in talks and she was just making such outrageous demands like regarding security and different things. They're like, you know, you got the head of Netflix there and he is worth a billion dollars. You're not. 
Like you, um, the, the attention on you may be a bit more, but that doesn't mean your security risk is higher because you're, let's not say there's probably women in there who, uh, cause I was looking through a list of like the most expensive red carpet looks. And of course it was all about the diamonds and stuff people are wearing. I'm sure there are diamonds there worth far more than what Megan has. And so why would you increase security when, you know, they're looking for a quick score? Most people, you know, crime is looking for a quick score. So why would you be more concerned and up the, the security for Meghan Markle when there's a woman walking around with a $5 million diamond? <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. So, I mean, I guess she could have worn her own blood diamonds. and But anyways, that's what it's interesting. All right. Uh, I hope that helps. Allison, um, cast, well, uh, are you saying that Marcus Anderson could be Andrew's son? Oh, goodness. No, but interesting. All right. And we have Raven79. Thank you so much for the tip this morning. Uh, uh, GM, why do you think Megan decided not to upstage Catherine on her birthday like she does every usually does every year? I think she knew she would get called out on top of the bad publicity she's already getting. I'm wondering if they're like WME. So this is William Morrison Endeavor. Megan's um, talent agency is really trying to reset her and Harry because 2023 was not a good year. And I wonder if they're, and they could have been the ones that told her, yeah, no, you probably shouldn't go to the Golden Globes. I just wonder if they're the ones that are really starting to put their foot down and like go, if you're in this relationship with us, you have to abide by our rules. You have to abide by them. If you're not going to do that, we're, we're going to have a problem. We can't work together. Um, because Megan, to me, always just seems like such a loose cannon because she is so, I think, controlling over her image and everything and what she wants to do that she will hire people to give her advice and then not follow it when it doesn't suit her whims. And these companies like WME are like, we're paid to do, we're paid the big bucks to make you look great. And you just look like a disaster all the time. So it's like, we've really got to reset. And again, I think it sounds like, oh, and I, I forgot to men mention new news. It sounds like Invictus Games is really starting to hurt. Because they're apparently now asking for people for donations, which they weren't really before. And which is just, that's brand, brand new. And obviously a reflection of the fact that they have some really crummy patrons. And their explanation for the money regarding Netflix. Oh, I'll have to pull that up. It's, it's really bad. So it's just really, I think Harry and Meghan are really beginning to get into this situation where things are just not going their way. And the like WME is like, well, we we're in this relationship. And here's the thing. The relationship is contingent on Megan making money. If Megan can't make money because nobody likes her, that's a big problem for WME. That's a big problem for WME. And so, yes, it is a just something to consider in this whole situation, too. So they may have told her, no, don't do that okay let's go over here uh rich says i hope queen marguerite passes a floral uh, aggregate which i'm probably pronouncing wrong a tr to megan it's a multi-piece redesign that looks spectacular with her dark hair yes i think that one would look super cool it's a very interesting piece and i'd love to see what mary would do with it um it's because it's just been so so exciting to just, like have something new doing tiaras it would be so great uh, Allison said, cast Cal, this is a moment in Tootsie where Michael Dorsey rips off the wigs and says, I'm Edward Kimberly. Oh my goodness. Okay. Interesting. All right. So Ritz says, I'll be Meg Gold. I bet Megan is applauding to crash the Oscars. Perhaps. I mean, it is technically the bigger show, but again, like what is her draw? Like suits made sense at the Golden Globes because it does mix television and movies. And obviously suits has had a resurgence. Again, I think it's interesting that they kind of joked, they're like, oh, maybe we would have been here a couple of years ago. And I was like, no, nah, you probably want to, you just uh, wouldn't be something that they would nominate generally. Um, maybe for some different aspects of the Emmys, but definitely not Earth. Maybe different aspects of the Golden Globes, but I don't think the Golden Globes has like a smaller event like the Emmys does. Anyways, so it just wasn't going to gonna hit the main time. But again, I think people are desperate for decent content and Hollywood is not producing that anymore. I think... Hollywood, if they recognized it, would be really freaked out about the fact that Suits did so well, because it means that the, whatever new they're producing is not catching the attention of the audience anymore. 
And that's why sometimes I bring back and I watch something like Golden Girls. <laughs> uh, DG says, Lady C says something going down really heavy with Harry and Meghan this spring. Any ideas? No, uh, I don't know what would be going on with them at this point. They're kind of, yeah, I don't know. And so it's really, really interesting to see what would be happening. I mean, I don't know. There's just so many different things that can be going out about it. And so we will um, see what it might come to, but I just don't know. G D G six, six. Oh, and good morning. Love the Saturday morning chats. Oh, I'm so glad you enjoyed them. I think they're so fun. I do think they're so fun guys. Okay. So let's go back here. I don't wanted to read you guys real quick. And so that you guys could read it too. Let's see if it comes up here and we'll share it. Okay. Oops. Nope. That's not what we want to share. I would be sharing the screen I already have. It would be screen and screen and screen. And so this is what the Invictus Games responded to when asked about Harry getting money from the games for Netflix. He says the Duke of Sussex and Archwell Productions. Well, I shouldn't say he, but Archwell says the Duke of Sussex, sorry, Invictus, the Duke of Sussex and the Archwell Pro Archwell Productions are redirecting all compensation they would have re would receive for this project to the Invictus Games Foundation to support our work with international wounded, injured, and sick service personnel. I just think this is really interesting and very confusing. It's not clear what they're talking about here. Uh, like this project, like which project? That's just bizarre. Like wh which project? And it's just so, so strange. And what would receive for this project? So did they receive it? I mean, then this is just recent. And this is underneath they're asking for, for money for people. So it's just kind of kind of crazy. And so we'll go over here too. And we have Cindy all. Cindy, thank you so much for the super sticker as well. I do appreciate it. And Sweet Pea as well. Oh, thank you. I do appreciate it this morning, guys. All right. Uh, so we'll go, um, we have D Dory. Hey there, Miss Brittany and Miss Pippa. Hello. And Miss Bella too. Miss Bella is downstairs as well. Uh, especially if they both started barking, that would be too much. Oh, and we have one of our members, Paula Ride. Good morning. We have Razmataz. Good morning. Yeah, I don't know how Beatrice really feels about Prince William, but that is what I heard. I think William favors the Tyndalls over the Yorks. Probably doesn't want to deal with the York drama. Uh, I, I've always heard that William is closer with Zara and Peter than he is with his younger cousins, and Harry is closer with Beatrice and Eugenie. I mean, that's that's kind of an outcome of age. There's there's I mean, there's a fair there's about six different six years between Beatrice and William. And I think eight years between um, Eugenie and William. So, I mean, that's a pretty big age difference, especially when you're younger sometimes. And so he, they definitely didn't hang out with them quite as much. And so I could definitely see them being just not as close. And I just think that's fine. I mean, everybody's, you know, family members are different and everything. Oh, we have Shaz. Shaz has become a YouTube member. Good morning, Shaz. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So let's go back up here real quick. All right. And we have Dory. Do you think the Epstein list and Megan's supposed involvement will affect um, the Harkles to the point where they may, may be lucky enough to never hear about them again? No, I don't think Megan's any part of the Epstein stuff. I don't think Megan's any part of that stuff. Um, it just doesn't make a ton of sense. So I just don't really go there. I mean, the Epstein stuff, I feel like is hard enough to discuss to begin with. Um, cause it's just, you know, kind of an ugly topic of discussion. So yeah, that's where my thought is. Stacy says, uh, the Stacy, the below average turtle. Good morning, afternoon, evening from Arizona. I love that you're the, the below average turtle. I wonder what the average turtle is. I do not know, but it's so cute. I love turtles. Like when I go to Hawaii, my, my goal is always to see a turtle. Always. Razzmatazz, have you seen all the good press that Tyndall's have been getting about their Australia trip and Princess Anne carrying her own baggage from flights? Yes, 100%. I've seen that too. And mad props to Zara. I would hate for anybody. And if she looks great, but like I would hate for anybody to be like stalking me with a high resolution camera while I'm swimming. That just sounds like horrendous. That sounds like a nightmare, like a legit nightmare. So uh, that's definitely not my idea, but and bravo to them. They're do, they're having a great time. Princess Anne also just, I love she just carries her own luggage on the plane, 
off the plane and then hands it off to somebody else and goes on her business. She's just no nonsense. I, I love it. I love it so much. Helena, good afternoon from Denmark. Hello. I hope you guys are all excited. And oh, I did get an email for those interested in Denmark. Apparently, I think it's probably going to pronounce it wrong. Travoli or something, a fat, um, park in Denmark. So like the world's oldest amusement park is having like a huge firework display in honor of Queen Marguerite and King Frederick now. And I actually got an email about it, like from their press team. So I was like super stoked about that. So if you are interested, that sounded super cool. And then I got that. I was like, darn, I really want to be in Denmark. But then I'm like, lots going on. So probably not the best idea, but it sounded like a good idea too. Kit Kat, I wonder what Lady C is talking about too. Hello. Yeah. And exciting times in Denmark. We have Cascal says, I would like to see the golden Nasut tiara gifted to Queen Margaret during her Ruby Jubilee by Greenland on Mary's dark hair. Not many golden tiaras out there, right? No. And I would say most of them aren't great looking. And I, I would love to see it on Mary's hair. Uh, I think it would look great on a blonde too. But gray and gold just don't seem to go together. And it was, yeah. So um, I think it would be, I would love to see it on Mary. Just a different look. Um, <laughs> aw. Nana says, Helena, are you excited about your new king and queen? I don't know about the rest of Denmark. I think they're pretty excited, but I think it's exciting too. Blanche says, hey, hey. We have Razmataz. I love it. The Tyndalls are lovely and don't rock the boat. I'm surprised how down to earth Zara is growing up with lots of rails around her. Yes, but I think it's, it's I think it helps too with the perspective of you're never going to be a working broil. I think kind of the, the weird middle ground Beatrice and Eugenie were in because their dad really wanted them to be working royals meant that they were kind of like kind of in limbo a bit instead of getting a directive going you're never going to be a working royal you don't have a title I think not having a title helps too it's like you need to find your own thing and Zara loved loved being a um an equestrian and so she became that and so yeah uh, Jan Jane B says enough of the malicious gossip of Be Eugenie and Beatrice those girls have done nothing wrong I do agree with that to a certain extent, because honestly, as well, although so many people question Eugenie and her friendship with Harry. I mean, he is family, so I don't I don't mind her friendship with him. I think it's a good thing. Uh, but, you know, as far as I'm aware, the girls really haven't stepped too far out of line, really. So Deandra says, hi, all. Hope you are well. You, too. <laughs> Why do that? Good morning from freezing cold Manitoba, Canada. The dashboard of my car says it's negative 23 degrees Celsius here. Brr. Oh man, that sounds cold. That sounds cold. It's like been windy here. And so I, I like, I, I don't like the wind. It keeps me up at night. So I'm like, oh. All right. And we have Elsa. Hello. My English is bad. What are your opinions? Will Harry have this award? I mean, uh, um, with uh, this prize. Sorry. I'm no, that's okay. I'm so sorry. I can't read. It looks like um, maybe German or something. Uh, so this aviation award, I mean, he'll accept it because he is shameless. <laughs> Him and Megan Markle are both totally and completely shameless. And so he a hundred percent will accept this award because as well think too, this award has essentially been concocted by his PR team uh, for him. I don't think the living legends of aviation were going, hmm, you know who's a living legend of aviation? You know, the guy we've heard nothing about in terms of his competency as a pilot. It's Prince Harry. No, this is something where I'm sure either through, I, I would imagine through WME, PR, everything, that Harry's name was floated as a possible contender. And so, and then they're like, yeah. So he, they may have directly donated or it just might be the outcome of their PR agency pushing different things. So I think he'll totally accept the award. I think he is just totally blinded by his own delusions at this point that have been fueled by Megan. Him and Megan have fueled each other's delusions. And it's this point, and Harry believes his own PR. Like I'm of the opinion too that Harry's PR from the palace regarding his 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 piloting and everything was a concoction by the palace. That that's what I think about it is that at the end of the day, that was a, like a, just a creation of the palace. And now he believes his own hype. And so that's why I think sometimes things get so bad is because he still, he still believes his own hype that was there way back in the day. And it's just not there anymore. So it's just like, it's just a little bit ridiculous. And so 
it's a little crazy. So yeah, he will attend. I would imagine Megan will too, because she's got nothing else to do. And I, again, I think it's so, 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 so funny that it's going to be at the Beverly Hilton because I was thinking about that for a minute. I was like, wait, Beverly Hilton, isn't that where they have the golden globes? And so I looked it up and yes. So they're going to be at the place where the Golden Globes were held like a week and a half after the Golden Globes. You cannot tell me that's not a coincidence. That was not a creation by Megan to make sure she got her a little bit of time in a Golden Globes adjacent, but where she could be more of the star. Like just, that just sounds so Megan, doesn't it? <laughs> Thanks, Elsa. We have Brown Eyed Girl says, rumor going around that Megan Ruckle is going to wear a dress like Diana did when she danced with John Travolta. Megan wants to recreate the same dance with John. Hashtag crazy Megan. That would not be a surprise to me in the slightest. If that happens, that would just not be a surprise. That would not be a surprise. And so that is just absolutely crazy. Uh, but I could totally see her doing that. I could totally see her doing that. And so, um, yeah, I don't know if it'll happen or not. We shall see. But if she's wearing a black gown and we know she likes black, even though she said she didn't wear color because oh, the Royals and she didn't want to clash, of course, she's still not wearing color. So like, you know, she would wear black for sure and attempt to do a dance. And she'd probably go, well, John, let's recreate. But I mean, how creepy is that too? You know, going, let's recreate my dead mother-in-law's dance that she did with you. But, I mean, I just want to have the same appeal either. Because, I mean, John and, and Diana were just so young at the time. So you kind of have the, the the feeling of youth and everything. That just wouldn't be there with Megan. It just looked like a sad imitation. <laughs> and wasn't that done at, like, the White House? And here they're doing it at the Beverly Hilton, at the Living Legends of Aviation Award, something nobody had ever heard of until they awarded it to Prince Harry. So. Oh, uh, Chris, thank you so much, Chris. I hope you are doing well. Did you hear about Queen Camilla's podcast, Treat the Puppies? Oh, thank you. Yes, I have heard about Camilla's podcast and I need to listen to it. There's just been, it's, it's kind of been a weird week with like having an extra dog in the house that I'm not used to because Pippa and I, ha we have our routine. We have a routine down. We know when we go out, we know when we go for walks and everything, but an additional dog just kind of messes things up. So, <laughs> um, we will see, but yes, thank you so much. Cause treats keep them happy and allow me to do things like editing and writing and different things I need to do for the channel. But I hope you're doing well in Sweden and keeping warm. I try to, I have, um, on my, my like weather app, I have like all the different countries, like where Royals are, including Sweden. And so I keep track of what, um, the weather is like over there in, in Stockholm and then in Oslo and then I don't know if I have Copenhagen or not. I can't remember. I have like London, Amsterdam. No, I can't think of the other ones. It gave me a, like a limit of how many I could do. But yeah, sometimes I look at Sweden and go, man, alive is a cold. <laughs> but I also think too, I want to go to the Nobels next year. So we shall see. But thank you so much, Chris. I hope you had a great start to your year. Wendy, not from Peter Pan. I like that. I like that. I used to, so little story as me as a child. I had a very vivid imagination as a child. And so I was obsessed with Peter Pan and I watched that movie in an adult and don't particularly like it, but funny story. Um, <laughs> I, I watched that movie and again, very vivid imagination. And so my mom would, would see me and I'd be walking around the house, like, and I'd be humming like in a happy tune because you know, if you sing happy thoughts, you can fly or whatever, or think happy thoughts. And so <laughs> my mom was very worried though, that I would take a flying leap off the balcony attempting to fly. Cause I had some happy thoughts. So, um, just a little, just a little thing there. Thank you so much for becoming a member. Cause I got to share that story, which is funny. <laughs> <laughs> but let's, um, I'm going to go back to a couple of our, um, um, mem uh, members who have given tips, but let me get to some of the, um, main channel questions here too, real quick before I get too far away. Brittany, I know crowning of crown prince Frederick, is going to be short and simple. Do you feel any foreign roles will attend for moral support? Apparently no. I, if any was going to attend, it would have been the Scandinavians. So it would have been somebody for Norway or Sweden. And we don't have any indication that any of them are coming. So, and I've heard somewhere and I saw some sort of report where people weren't coming. So, yeah. Uh, Jackie Nelson says, good morning from Kauai. It's 5 a.m. here. Oh, my goodness. That is so early. Thank you so much for listening in. That's so awesome. I so appreciate that. She's so early. So early. Um, 
I know I'm not a morning person. Uh, so sometimes even 10 a.m. for me is hard. <laughs> which it shouldn't be. It should be totally fine. Nana233 says, oh, I, um, hi, yeah, wait for the Arctic front here to really hit. We had wind chills, a negative 55 here in rural, um, is that Alberta? Um, ALT yesterday. Oh, that sounds so cool. We have Carmen from Texas. We have Stacy, stay warm, sweater weather. Jamie, good morning from Virginia. Cheryl from Oklahoma, good morning from shaking and frozen Oklahoma. 16 degrees here, which is unusual. And we have um, a two to four earthquakes in the last 24 hours. Wow. That's crazy. Two, um, two and 4.4 earthquake. Yeah. Earthquakes are weird. I was living somewhere and we had an earthquake and it was like, it was like a pop. So it was like more like almost like a bomb. It was interesting. And I was like, and I was like home alone. I was like, did something happen? And I had to like, look it up. And I was like, oh my gosh, there was a little earthquake, a little mini earthquake. Trisha says, morning, Razmataz, Oklahoma, really had the wind rushing down the plains yesterday and with more snow, not a fan. Oh, I'm so glad I don't live in snow anymore. Kate, good morning, everyone. Laners, good morning from Northern California. Liliana from Portugal. We have Becky from Long Beach, California. Ritz, I will miss future Queen Mary's beautiful, perfectly executed curtsies. I wonder if she will continue to curtsy to her mother-in-law out of respect. That would be interesting. I'd love to see that. I love, yeah, Mary has great curtsies. Metmara has great curtsies. I don't know if she's able to do it as well anymore. Um, but there's at least one or two pictures where she's doing something really, really deep. But yeah, I love uh, Mary's deep curtsies. I think they're amazing. Um, it's, yeah, not as many women do those really, really deep ones. So I'm going to miss that. Raven79, thank you so much for the tip this morning. Did you hear that King Charles may allow Catherine to issue royal grants, a prestigious honor usually reserved for blood royals? Megan is going to be mad. That would be awesome. I think it would be fantastic. You know, Emmy, Emmy London could get one, LK Bennett, Jenny Packham. Like, I'm thinking fashion, but I'm sure Catherine has other interests too that she could give a royal grant to. But I just think that would be that would be awesome to see. I love that. I love that. I just think that's, it's just awesome to see sort of the transition of power and stuff. And so it's just so fun. It's fun to see those things. And I love when I get something like Hunter boots or whatever that have the Royal um, warrant inside. I just think those are so cool. Just something we don't have here. We don't have any sort of warrant system here. We just have influencers in the Kardashians. <laughs> uh, Philippa says the negative feedback Harry and Meghan will get if they turn up makes me really want them to turn up. Yeah, I mean, it's it'll be good for YouTube. <laughs> it'll be 100% good for YouTube um, because they are just sort of the gift that keeps on giving. They they just don't. Yeah, it's just it's just fascinating because they just go and I'm like, I guess that's what they want to do. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah, they are, they are interesting. They are interesting. So, I mean, who would have thought, right? They will, they are interesting couple <laughs> and just great fodder. And I just think that's what they don't understand either. Or even the Sussex stands. It's like, why do people talk about them so much? It's like, well, cause they're entertaining or why do they talk about them more than Andrew? It's like, well, the Andrew T things kind of icky and the Harry and Meghan thing is entertainment. It is. It is. People see it as entertainment. And so, the, I mean, it's just like, I, I, to me, it's like it's just so easy when they complain. I was like, why do you, you complain? It's so obvious. All right, Judith, good morning from Windy and Cold, Tennessee. I love hearing all about everybody's weather. I don't know why. <laughs> it is shameless that Prince Harry brought, bought another award. This one never flew anything. Yeah, we just don't. And again, I, I just don't want to do a definitive definitive because I feel like part of the palace PR was masking the fact that he didn't pass and he wasn't actually a pilot. But again, he believes it, which is like, oh my goodness. Um, so we have Rhonda here. I imagine Megan is looking to get a picture dancing with John Travolta. Yes. And Chris said 137,000 followers. Proud of you. Like if you love RNN. Why? Thank you. Uh, Jane Bucks fan says, good morning from Tampa, Florida. One of our members. I think it's very cold here. At least it is to me. Her Majesty the Queen says, looks like the chat is already spicy and the live hasn't even started. I'm here for it. Wow. Oh my goodness. I just, wow. We're not even to the conversations yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I get so far behind. Okay. So this fan, thank you so much for the tip this morning. What do you think is next for Andrew? Rumor has it uh, that King Charles is having a hard time kicking him out of Royal Lodge. I just, he just needs to leave Royal Lodge. He just does. He just does. It's, 
it's a it's the house is a reflection of his hubris. So he doesn't want to move. And I understand because it's a step back and he thinks he's he's too good or whatever to be to take a step back. But the reality is Andrew is the one who screwed up his own life in this instance. Andrew is the one who had the friendship with Jeffrey Epstein. Andrew is also the one that continued the friendship with Jeffrey Epstein when everybody else took 12 gigantic steps back after the first initial investigations and um, and uh, charges were laid out. Andrew was the only one hanging around and everybody else was like, yeah, no, probably not. So in that respect, he just deserves sort of what's coming to him. Um, and at some point too, when you're older, it's like, you just need to downsize. Like my parents have done that. Like they had ended up getting this, um, great house one time and it was just ended up being really big. And while it was awesome, it was fun. It was like just a pain to upkeep. And so it's just like downsize. Catherine and William have a smaller, much smaller place than he does. And they actually have three children. And Andrew has two grown children with grandchildren. Sure. But his children are grown. He's not married. Yeah, sure. For he lives with him. That's a different whole can of worms. But like he could totally downsize to Frogmore Cottage. And the other thing, too, is that because I guess Royal Lodge is placed kind of closer to the public, it requires more security for him in, in theory that Charles is covering. And so the best thing to do is for him to move further into the interior of Windsor Great Park and so that they can e more easily protect him. And so it's just from so many angles. It's, it's better. And so I just think they really need to give them the keister. Jessica Reed, thanks for having such a great commentary. Well, you are welcome. I hope you guys really, really enjoy it. I enjoy these. I think they're just so fun. So um, La Lowe's Unicorn said, good afternoon from pretty cold Dunbar. And all. what do you feel about your Earl and Countess of Dumbarton? I'd imagine not very well. <laughs> um. All right. So Deandra, hello from South Africa. Person pink um, swaying hair. I love it. Rhea says uh, is from West Sussex. Good morning. We have rainy Florida. We have Deborah and then Michelle and Cam and swims with whales and Bonnie. So hello, everyone. Let's keep going here. We got Tanya. Hello, Tanya. We got Godzilla, man, strap cold in Chicago and love it. That's awesome. Uh, greetings from cold and snowy Sweden. I imagine so. I imagine so. And um, I'm an American, didn't know Dunbarton until Harry turned it down. I always thought positive thoughts since then. Yeah, I'm sure it has a great history and how it came to its name. Uh, Susie Q, hello from Wisconsin. Then we got Lizzie and Maria and Laners and Rose. And we have Shell and our Sal. And Kate, Mary Kate, good morning, Brittany. Dogs make life interesting sometimes. Yes, they do. <laughs> they really do. Uh, Millie says, good morning, everyone. Um, eek, first live, hello from North Yorkshire. Hello, Rachel. I'm sorry for being a little late this morning. You look and sound great. Awesome. Wasn't sure my computer has been a little funky this morning too. It's like some, most of the time it's perfectly fine. And then every once in a while, it just decides to be funky. Um, what time? 10. Yes, I was late. Susie Q from Wisconsin. We got Brandy and James. We got tea time with Mima. Good morning from Vermont. No power generator going. Oh, I hope you guys are okay. You know, you, everybody had a big storm. Okay, let's see if we can find a question. We have Kathleen. Yay, so happy I can finally make a live with you, Brittany, and all that are here. Thank you so much for your research, insight, and news on all royals. Well, thank you. <laughs> Uh, Lizzie said it's a paid for award, 30,000. He was a gunner, not a pilot. So I will say apparently people were going into Wikipedia and constantly updating and changing the description of the award to include paid, which it was not. So I don't think it was, but again, it's not like paid and like he paid direct money. It's like, it's paid in terms of whatever PR and everything donations that he was doing. But again, it goes to show that like just Engaging with Harry and Meghan at this point, they're just so toxic. Anything they do, especially something as stupid as giving him a living legend of aviation award, which everyone knows he is not. When he is competing with astronauts, it's so clear how inferior Harry is in that instance. <laughs> so clear. The guy who barely graduated high school had to help basically cheat in art, allegedly. You're giving him a living legend of aviation award. It's just like, yeah, no. 
All right. And so we have Letitia. Good morning, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Can't wait to hear all about the no found invitation for the Globes. It should be interesting to see. Uh, Dory says, I saw something that mentioned people having started a petition to not give Harry this award for the reasons you mentioned. Yeah, I mean, I, like, but again, they're, they're a nonprofit. They can give the award to who they want. It's just like, if I was Buzz Aldrin and Harry was getting the same award I did as a living legend, the man who walked on the literal moon, I'd be offended. I'd be deeply offended. Because it challenges the validity of all every other award that people have been given. All right, Diz fan, thank you so much for the tip again. My favorite Golden Globes moment has to be when they made fun of Harry asking Granny Amelia Staunton for money. Yes. Yes, it's not just that they questioned why Harry and Meghan are getting millions. It was the whole lead up to the question. I mean, obviously they had, well, the royal family's dysfunctional. I mean, the royal family's always been dysfunctional throughout the centuries. It's not like a huge whopping surprise. And they're white. Well, I mean, they are. They're in Britain. What what else would they be? Um, like, that's like a big shock to people. It's like, no, it's not. But the, the idea that Harry, and again, they're highlighting the fact that Harry and Meghan are desperate for money and need money. And so that was like part, a huge part of the joke. And I was like, Ooh, that's bad. That's really bad. And so, yeah. Uh, chocolate Nutella says, why are Meghan Markle fans called sugars? So they're called sugars for, I, I don't know where the, 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 the term got started really. I don't know the, the history of it, but it essentially comes to be people who are just so sycophantic that they're, they're sugar, like they're sugary on it. I don't know. Does that make sense? I don't, I don't really know. And so they, they just get like, so incredibly like obsessed with it and they, they're sweet. And so they agree with like everything. Now I am pro monarchy is what I call myself. So I support monarchies. I support countries that have monarchies and I am proud to see monarchies out and about, but I will call out things when I see them on all sides. And I do have my favorites, like people I like, of course I do, but I can also say, well, Queen Maxima, she is so fun to watch. Sometimes her fashion is an epic disaster. And, and sometimes perhaps she and her husband just are a little too flashy at, in moments. Because uh, they did do that whole thing where they went on vacation to Greece when everybody else was in lockdown in the Netherlands. Which, again, not a good look. So I can see those things. But sugars can't see any wrongdoing anywhere. Uh, so I never consider myself a sugar. I, I consider myself a, a fan of royals. And royalty, if that makes sense. And because I, I get this thing a lot sometimes, especially because I had a lot of trouble with the, the Sussex stands yesterday. But I, I call myself a commentator, not a journalist, because obviously I commentate more than I am doing journalism. So I want to make sure people are clear on that. But people get so confused. OK, I was like, why is it all of a sudden getting so dark? It gets dark when I put, put my mug to my face. Okay, so we have um, Care Bear says, Hi, Brittany. I'm curious if you have seen Candace Owens' theory that Prince Harry actually believes Meghan Markle is Princess Diana. I think she makes some valid points. I haven't particularly seen that, but yes, he does believe like she is a reincarnation of Diana. That was like their whole thing in Australia and everything. Like he believes she's Diana, but he believes she is the creation of Diana that the media portrays. I think William has a very, very realistic view of his mother, whereas Harry has a very fantasy driven view as his mother. So the differences between that is Harry, William can admit her faults. Harry can't. William can admit her, 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 uh, her greatness within the realm of, I think, realism, whereas Harry sees a fantasy. And so I think that definitely very much is reflected in, in all this, in all this stuff. And Harry's desperate to fill his mother wound. And so he desperately grasps onto Megan because of that. But Megan is not his mother. And in addition, she exhibits really the worst qualities of his mother. Cause he tried to go to like all his family members and go and her family members, Diana's and go, look, she's just like Diana. And they're looking at him going, dude, no, no, she's not. And I'm sure they all realize that she exhibits some of the worst qualities of Diana. They share some of those toxic traits because Diana could be a bit toxic. Like she was really nasty to Sophie, who is now the Countess of Edinburgh or Duchess of Edinburgh when they first met, like um, making fun of her Marks and Spence um, suit when Ka when Diana was in Chanel. Um, 
there was kind of that famous instance. And she like, you know, wouldn't talk to Elton John for a period of time. I can't remember quite why the, the bust up or Fergie that one I kind of understand a bit more, but again, Diana could have some of those tendencies, but at the same time, she was very empathetic. I think she was very able to connect well with people and her, she was authentic. I think the challenge with Meghan Markle is she's not authentic. Even when she's trying to be compassionate and conciliatory and everything, there's just a, a fakeness to it that you can see. Like you just listen to her podcast and just like the whole thing is just so stinking scripted and it sounds that way. Mary Kate Beganovich. I thought Gina Starkey's response was hilarious. Yeah, this is like, we don't have her number. And they're just laughing. I mean, it could be sarcasm, but I don't think it is. Uh, Arcel says, I heard she was invited, but wanted to give out the award by herself, and she's above the others. That's my theory. That's my personal theory. Ritz, that's nonsense, just acting like a diva for more attention. Perhaps everyone else meshed and vibed with the other cast. If Gina says they don't have her number, it's probably for good reason. Um, yeah, and I don't think Megan, I'm sure Megan changed her number and didn't give it to him. I'm sure that's exactly what she did. Um, I mean, again, it's just my theory, I should say. It's just my theory, but that's what I would imagine she would do. Uh, and Matthew says, Princess Anne's coverage has been amazing. She carries her own bags off the plane. What a woman she is. Uh, Megan uh, Lowe's uh, Unicorn says Megan Markle wasn't a big deal on suits. Only the four main actors appeared, which, yeah, just does make sense. A hundred percent. Oh, sorry. I was just reading people saying bless you after I was sneezing. Thank you. Um, that makes me feel so, so, so warm inside. Um, and so, yeah. So Ellis agree if she was invited, she would have been there. Supersonic speed. Yeah. Unless again, it didn't fit her. Uh, so. Deepa says it was reported she was told to lay low because she was oversaturated. Is she actually listening to advice? Maybe, or maybe she's kind of being forced to at this point. So, Gina Torres was great in Serenity and Firefly. I've heard that. Dawn says good morning, Brittany and Pippa. She says good morning, too. She was, oh my gosh, she is such my little baby. We we cuddle and we sleep in in the morning. And my sister's dog, because she's she works and her husband works. Um, I mean, I work from home, so I can get up kind of whenever I want. Um, and so I need to get up earlier. But we we are we are cuddle bugs in the morning, and we are sleepers in the morning. And my sister's dog was not. <laughs> I even took my sister's dog down and outside and back in, and my dog was still on her bed, going, "I'm just still sleeping in the room. I ain't getting up." <laughs> All right, we have Katie. Megan was probably afraid to go to the Golden Globes because no one would would talk to her. Taylor, um, probably. Taylor Swift was in the room of Golden Globes. Megan Markle is a minor character in comparison. Yeah, like if you were somebody who was interested in, let's say, getting a monetary amount from somebody at the Golden Globes, who has more money, Taylor Swift or Megan Markle? Taylor Swift. <laughs> so why would you need more security for Megan Markle? Uh, because at this point, too, we all know that like, what, what would Charles do? I mean, I think it's kind of become more, more awareness that Charles doesn't even have that much money. Uh, Leanne says, have you got any info on ITV buying UK rights to have the Oscars? And they are talking about Megan being on the board or something. NS mentioned this. Haven't heard anything about that. So I can't say. Hi, Azima. Good morning. Uh, Duchess says, is anybody seeing the live? It's just the thumbnail saying live will begin shortly. Oh. I think every I, I, the 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 thing is on, so I would assume so. Uh, Asma, why is everyone saying soup is, is popular? I mean, it it was popular on Netflix, but not like gangbuster. I mean, again, there's a difference between the shows that they give awards to and the shows that people actually watch. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's true. Um, else, Lay said, Brittany sent her video. She loved. Or in Firefly, she wasn't being rude. She said Gina was the bigger star and gave with more credits to her name. Yes, she was definitely the bigger star. And I will say I didn't mention her in Firefly. But again, uh, I, I've heard, I've known that she has a much bigger CV. And she was definitely the bigger get for that show. Especially when it started. She was the biggest name, I would guess. Marilee says Megan had the absolute privilege of meeting the RF and the Queen. And she gave it up for sketchy Hollywood. 100%. 100%. I just can't imagine being a royal which is so exclusive. It's the most exclusive social club in the world is being royalty. Billionaire, you can maybe become that. You can maybe marry into that. 
that's maybe a little bit more gettable, maybe. Millionaire status in Hollywood, pretty common. But royalty is the ultimate social status. It's, there's so few people to marry to become a royal. And Megan somehow did it. And I was like, no, no, you know what? I just want, I just want Hollywood. I just want to hoof it like everybody else in Tinsel Down. And I'm like, why? <laughs> that's such a step down. <laughs> and that's so just in, in a way, like you said, sketchy and also just like a reflection of where her true values are, which is not, you know, supposedly helping the people like she wants. She wants the money. Um, Beth says, I have a question. Have Harry Megan ever done anything for Sussex? Have they spent more than half an hour there in all these years? No, they, they did do one um, visit there. I don't know how long they stayed, but they, they did definitely do one visit there. And that was it. <laughs> Uh, Stacey says the coronation for King Frederick happening now. No, it happens tomorrow. So I'll do a live stream. So I'll create a separate live stream thing for it. And so, yeah. This fan, um, um, good morning, Brittany. My favorite moment from, uh, G uh, was the joke about Annie. Oh yes. And you put that in later. Yes. It was so funny. I get there. Just sometimes it takes me a while to get through the, the thing, but I get there eventually. Uh, Deandra, thank you so much for the tip. Hi, Brittany. Are the jokes at the Golden Globes scripted? Maybe Meghan Markle found out about the jokes regarding her and Harry and skipped the Golden Globes to save face and not get humiliated live in front of A-listers. So it is scripted to a certain extent. Like obviously that the, whoever the stand-up person is, has a, a script that they're working from, but they, they can ad lib. And the Golden Globes is not going to tell the celebrities that as far as I'm aware, I wouldn't think so that they are going like celebrities go there knowing that the host is going to roast them. That's what they should expect. Now, if it's Ricky Gervais and he really, really roasts them. Like, I love the year where he said, nobody wants to hear about your politics. Nobody wants to hear about your personal beliefs. Just accept your little award and get off the stage. That was fantastic because that's a hundred percent correct. That's why people aren't watching award shows anymore. That's why people aren't going to movies and Hollywood and watching TV shows like the newer stuff as much anymore is partly because of all the politics that have been infused into it now. So when you take a step back for that and people are just actors and stuff, that's just better. But I can't imagine that they would go, oh yeah, by the way, we're going to roast you and we're going to make fun of the fact that you don't have any money. <laughs> I don't think they would tell them that. They would be, and they would want them there too because they would want to get the reaction. I, I, I would, oh, in the reaction of Megan being called, like Harry and Megan being called out for their money woes. Oh, I love that. Love that. All right, Allison, thank you so much for the tip. This is, hi, Brittany. This is very cheery in chilly England. Do you think Harry is trying to substitute his prestige as a prince with all these awards? Yes. Harry is, I think, seeking the royal high, which he lost. Like he's still trying to be royal. Megan's still trying to be royal. They're still trying to do the royal thing. Because, again, they didn't expect them to get kicked out of the royal family. I mean, which they weren't, technically. But they were essentially told, well, here's the door. Don't let it hit you in the butt on the way out. If you want to leave, you know, you got to leave. You got to leave. That's, that's the thing. Um, so, where was I going with that? So, Harry and Meghan are still chasing that kind of royal high and just not ever achieving it. And so he's, he's replacing things that he used to do as a prince with other things. And this is, this is one of them. I mean, again, it just doesn't make any sense for him to receive, like everybody knows he doesn't deserve this award. Everybody does. So yeah, it's just, it's just so embarrassing. So embarrassing. All right. Bees and knees says super, he sends a super sticker. Why? Thank you so much this morning. Bees knees. I love your little cowboy hat and your little, um, um, your little, um, icon thing. That's so cute. Um, <laughs> Marley says, I would have loved to meet the RF and spend time, especially mucking around with Zara and Mike. I think they're, they're great fun. They're great fun. Um, so Abu was a lifestyle. Good morning from Pennsylvania. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Judah says since nine 11 security has been an all time high at award shows. Yeah. I would imagine show. So, uh, Ella says, wow, Vic is asking for donations. That's sad. Yeah. I think too, the corporate sponsors are beginning to pull out because nobody's watching these games. And so they're not getting any traction off like being a sponsor of these games. Like, again, I think that the Invictus games needs to rethink their whole, their whole entire setup. Cause I just don't think, I just don't think, I don't think it's sustainable. I don't think it's viable in the long run. 
um, especially as conflicts get further removed just from the public consciousness, there, there becomes like, like, I feel like 2014, the first one in 2016 were the high because we still had conflicts going on in different countries. I mean, there's still conflicts going on, not that there's not. And of course, people who are involved in Victus games, there are conflicts going on. But for the the, the greater consciousness, like, uh, you know, Americans and the Brits who are going to be kind of like the main facilitators of this, that they weren't super into it uh, or that, that they had conflicts helped. Because then you can think, oh, I'm supporting the soldiers now and in the future kind of thing. But with Harry, with those getting further removed, and it's just like, I think they only have like 500 competitors technically, which to me just seems really, really small. And I feel like the, they need to downsize instead of expanding. They're trying to expand in Canada when they really should be contracting. And they're not doing that. I, cause I just don't, I just cannot see how it's making any money. I just can't see because I don't think not enough people are attending. And I think your bread and butter would be merchandise in this instance. And nobody's buying merchandise except for the people competing or their family members. And so it's like, it's just ain't sustainable. Uh, Brit says Invictus is at fault for their own disaster. They allowed the fraud to hijack everything. Yes, I would say too. Um, definitely allowing Harry and Meghan to become, it be, to become the Harry and Meghan show. Massive, massive mistake. My name is, my cat's name is Karen. Says, um, give us a tip. It says, love your channel, Brittany from Pensacola, Florida. Why, thank you. I really do appreciate it this morning. We also have Stoned Royal. What if the jokes and snubs in Hollywood are a way to kick them out of California? Could definitely be, but I also think it's a subtle like indicator. It's like, if Harry and Meg, like they, they, they need to make good content. <laughs> I was like, this is so hard. Um, Cause the thing is too, like their future plans are basically to do more of li like live to lead. It sounds like, and it's like, well, that, that bombed hard and Victus technically bombed. And so it's like, y'all need to like do something. You, I'm, anyways, <laughs> maybe it's hard for me. Cause I love content. I like, and people are wondering, well, what will you, you know, I get challenged sometimes to go, well, what do you do if Harry and Megan go away? And it's like, oh, I have like 12 other ideas. 12 other ideas. Um, it would take a while to get obviously things in the same place, but I have like, I have millions of ideas. I just don't have the time or sometimes the discipline to do everything I want to do. So, uh, yeah, but I just, I, I, I love, I love doing content. I hate the editing process that, that, Oh, sometimes that's tough, but I love, love the creation process. I think it's so fun. Um, but Harry and Megan, apparently not so much. <laughs> Stacy, the below average turtle. Wow, is Lady Colin Campbell a soothsayer or what? I don't know. We'll see. Asma says, was Suits ever nominated for a Golden Globe? I doubt it. No, I doubt it. Maybe one of the other Emmy Awards, like the lower ranking ones, but definitely not the huge ones. Um, Let's see. <laughs> Asma says, will anyone be from the R BRF go to the crowning of Crown Prince Frederick? No, this will be a small event just attended by royals from uh or just the danes not even all the danish like grandchildren are going so prince uh henrik and um prince uh, princess athena so these are the younger two of prince Joachim's children they'll be staying in um the united states they're in washington dc and so they'll be staying in school so and we have the garson thank you so much for the super sticker this morning from oh canada um canada is a lovely country uh, Dory says, I'm with you about Golden Girls and Friends. Yep. I mean, there's like, a, you know, you they obviously have their, their little bent, but it's like so much more. It's just, I can handle it so much more better than the stuff they put in now. It's so crazy. Uh, Nana says, I subscribe to BritBox Streams British TV. Once you do, you can't go back to the blog of Netflix. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I need to watch more Brit box stuff. Cause I think the British stuff is a bit better. Hollywood's just gone. So a hundred percent into, 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 um, DEI and everything. It's just like storylines make no sense anymore. I don't know. I just, I love stories and storytelling. So, um, to just, and I loved going to the movies. That's what I did a lot as a kid. And that's what I actually remember a lot of is going to the movies because I loved it. Uh, Ginger, and I haven't gone in forever. The last movie I saw was Oppenheimer and I wanted to see Napoleon, but I heard it was bad. 
so I didn't end up going. But I was, Napoleon and Oppenheimer were the only two movies I was excited about this year. I thought Oppenheimer was awesome. I need to get it on Blu-ray and watch it again. Ginger says, loved your London trip. I was there last year. Oh, yay. Hi, Ginger. Thank you for sharing. You are so you were so welcome. It was just so fun. So, so fun. I was like, I'm really hoping um, Trevor Trip, the company I work with, that they have another London trip at some point because I think that would be awesome. Blondie says, do you think Megan will try to have her Diana moment and dance with John Travolta? Somebody asked that earlier, and I, I think the answer is yes. Marley says, do you think Harry and Megan will ever divorce? I only ever gave them five years. Obviously, they made it past that. So, but I will say we got the first like serious stories about them leading separate lives, Harry spending nights at hotels and that they're, they're not getting along. Megan hasn't worn, hasn't worn her engagement ring in a year. So I, I feel like I was actually kind of technically right on the button because my thing always is, is they, they have nothing in common. They had no common activities. Like their commonality was supposedly, um, like their philanthropy, which is not really a common activity, totally. Um, so we'll go over here. Terry, love your channel. Appreciate all the work you do on it. Why, thank you, Terry. You are so sweet. I do appreciate it so much. And we got B Garzon. Thank you so much for becoming a member. I appreciate it. All right. Becky says, the only time I watched it was when Brittany took us through an episode that was enough for me. <laughs> Love my Barn Barnaby Miller. Yeah, it was, it was not great. I, I, I was too long, too. They must have forced every show to have a two-hour first episode because that that dragged. That dragged so much. Terry said, the Invictus games are losing money because the focus is no longer on the athletes, but on Harry and Megan. Invictus is paying Harry and Megan's hotel, food, helicopter rides, Megan's clothes. I mean, we don't know exactly that, but... Yeah, it's just become such the Harry and Meghan show. It's ridiculous. Asma says, why is Harry getting an award? Not sure if he is a pilot. I thought he was a bunker. Harry, um, that's that's what most people think. <laughs> uh, S. Kenny says, Hollywood is putting out crap. They don't care about what we like. I watch old shows too, like Bewitched. Yeah. Helena says, it's called a proclamation of King Frederick. Great to know, Helena, who is one of our members from Denmark. So... What do you think Lady C was talking about coming out in spring? I'm not sure. I think maybe finally her whole, maybe uh, now that I'm thinking about maybe her finally, her whole like uh, attempt to be an influencer again, like via like Martha Stewart and stuff. As much says, is Angela Kelly writing a book? I do not know. Uh, Jackie says, Brittany, great to be able to join your chat with your proposed trip to Scotland should be amazing. I did Scotland before joining your London and the Cotswolds tour last year. Hi, Jackie. I hope you're doing well. Yes, we are. I'm very excited about it. Um, it should be so fun. Again, I love Scotland. So it's been so long since I've been. So I can't wait to go back. But I hope you're doing well, Jackie. Uh, Margaret says, I think Lady C has some info, but she tends to give timelines, which are rarely correct. Yeah, so we we shall see. And things do change quite a bit. So I don't know. Um Let's see. <laughs> um, Asma says, who's Marcus Anderson? He's Megan's connection to the Soho house and like one of her like friend, friend people. Um, so he, again, all uh, Megan's friends are kind of similar people. Um, so Missy says, who is, has heard the news that Zara's BFF Dolly Maud is now Princess Royals lady in waiting. I did see a little bit about that, but I honestly didn't read it. So I can't tell you for sure. But if she is, I think that's great. I mean, yeah, that's kind of does how it works. You need people who can keep your confidence. So let's go here. Ah, Nana233 says, everyone tap the thumbs up to give Brittany credit on YouTube. Why, thank you. Um, uh, Debbie says, it's kind of weird that Megan wants to give this award to Harry. I think Megan wants to have a dance with John Travolta like Diana Princess of Wales had with John. Yeah, so this is, I think, Neil Sean proposed that Megan apparently wanted to give Harry the award. I don't know about that. I wouldn't imagine that would be how this would play out because it's the organization giving the award. Will Megan attend? I imagine yes, but I don't know for sure. But, yeah, so she would be giving this award to to Harry. So, uh, or she would be there with Harry, but the award would be given by the organization, not him. Just think that would be weird if it was her. 
<laughs> Marilee says, what is Megan going to do once all the deals stop coming up and things dry up for her? I don't know what she'll do. Probably do the book and stuff. Um, I imagine that would be what it would, what would look like for sure. Okay. <laughs> is uh, Azif uh, says, isn't Flop Gun a great name? Let's take his weed away. Yeah, that, that was a pretty, that was a pretty good, good name. I, I do have to say. If tea time with Mima says Her Prince Harry failed the pilot exam and test. He was only a co-pilot. Yes, I believe that is the word is that is the, the case. But just in case I could be wrong, I kind of do a qualitative. I like to do that. Asima says, are there any plans in the works for Netflix and Harry and Megan? No idea. We have this vague Megan from the Variety event going, we're working on things. But there was, gosh, some sort of report. I want to say it was in the Wall Street Journal article about a Great Expectations redo focusing on the female lead and then um, the the Meet Me at the Lake book. But Netflix owns the rights to that book. So if Netflix decides they can't do it, they can pull from them. So I don't know what that, that looks like, really. So we shall see. Oh, Solar Flare. I love that. Thank you so much for the super sticker this morning. You are so kind. I do appreciate it so much. It's so fun to have you with you guys on here. Um, it's just so fun. Lorraine says, Hughes, uh, I can't believe I made the live. I, I've turned my days and nights around. Good. Good for you. I need to get my days and nights turned around. <laughs> oh, man, I've been busy. <laughs> Do you think uh, John Travolta would try to draw Harry and Meghan towards Scientology? I don't know because there were a lot of thoughts about when, when Kelly died, his wife, that maybe he was actually starting to take a little bit of a step back from Scientology because he didn't think any Scientologists in his in in like the information about her death and stuff and usually they do and so it was just a little odd so I'd like I hope so uh or I hope so that he is stepping away from Scientology and I wouldn't think Harry and Meghan would get into that but maybe maybe to get in head in Hollywood I don't know they might be willing to do it Scientology has has big purse strings um yeah are Harry and Meghan going to the United Kingdom? I don't think Meghan Markle would ever willingly go there again unless there'd be a lot of conditions. Uh, Nana asked, what is the name of Queen Camilla's podcast? Is it the Queen's re Reading Room or something to that effect? Okay. Um, yeah, a couple of people said Queen's Reading Room because she loves to read and she's really passionate about reading. Siva says, um, to, I guess the sugar is somewhere on here. Oh, <laughs> uh, it says, if you don't like Brittany, um, go away. And that's true. Like, if you don't like what I say, why are you listening? Go somewhere else. Um, Stone says, do you think the petition to remove Prince Harry as a recipient for the award will come to fruition or make a difference? Probably not. Again, this is a PR bit. So, Yeah. <laughs> Uh -huh. Juan Carlos says all Europe's royals should be there. I would hope so, but not this time. This again is a very, very small event. I think it would be different maybe in Sweden. So, I, or maybe even in Norway, but um, in, in Denmark, it's very, very small. Michelle H says, how are your studies going? They're going well, um, but I didn't sign up because they kind of split the semester in two. So I didn't sign up for classes that start soon. I may, um, I'm trying to get the channel in a little bit of a better place because I felt like I was like really, really behind and I couldn't do anything on the fashion side and I really, really wanted to do more there. So I'm going to work on a little bit and hopefully maybe get to something in March. But I'm going to take some time because traveling September all month of September like really wore me out. So I was like, I need to take some time and just kind of refocus and get things on a better system and then go on. And I have like... A couple more primary things to get done, but so far I still have an A and like 4.0. So I was like, that's good. But then I was like, oh, I want to challenge myself more. So Erit says, I'll be at the Scandinavians. Well, I'll get together for some type of private party soon to celebrate. Yeah, it's so sweet that they, they enjoy hanging out together. I love that, that they're so close. I just love that. And um, it was really sweet when Prince Christian, he turned 18, he had his big birthday gala. Princess Ingrid Alexander of Norway was seated next to him. So I was like, oh, they must be really close. It's so sweet. See the below average turtle sets. 
<laughs> um, we're not deranged being jealous over another woman when you are supposedly mature and with the man you love, what's there to compete for? Not really, but yeah. Okay. Cax as is Megan still in hiding? Yeah, I mean, she was pretty, yeah, she's been in hiding. But is here's a weird thing, and, and let me know what you guys think, because I am I'm like of two opinions on this topic. So there's just every day there's stories about Harry and Megan. Every day. Now, I'm of two opinions. That one is definitely is them pushing various stories in the media, which totally could be. But my other thought is, is that they did that so much in the beginning. That the media, they oversaturated the media market. And so the media salivates more for it. So people who aren't really talking, don't really know what they're talking about, um, still talk about Harry and Meghan because it's like everybody is, is like it's entertainment. So people want more. It's that like entertainment factor. And so I'm, I'm just curious. What do you all think? That it's like almost Harry and Meghan have created their own monsters. So even if they're quote unquote quiet, nothing's really quiet because people are still talking. And that, and I just think that's an interesting, an interesting thought. Hey, Brittany, Blanche says, I just checked Diana's dress with John Travolta was the blue velvet dress. And your name, Blanche, makes me want to watch Golden Girls again. It's a good show. I don't like the first season quite as much because I think it's interesting because I think they think that women in their fifties could not like hold a show. And so they kept like dropping in younger people. And then once they finally were like, Oh yeah, everybody loves these ladies. It just went on and on. And I was like, that's great. I love it. Um, Gwyneth says, um, one of our members, hi Brittany, what can you tell us about Doria and her absence during Megan's youth? So, um, Tom Bauer wrote, and I, I would more subscribe to this aspect is that she just has some sort of business thing. She was interested in growing and just sort of left. And wasn't really interested in being married. And I don't think necessarily all that interested in being mom. And so she just left. Um, yeah. So I know a lot of people think she was in prison. I don't subscribe to that notion. But yeah, I just think that's. I mean, neither here nor there. It's so it's just so interesting now that, you know, obviously Megan and her mom are close, but like, to me, if you're close with Megan, I always question your intentions because Megan can only really be close with people who are like Megan, if that makes sense. So she can only be close with people who are really, really all that interested in, um, what should we call it? It's all that interested in like fame and fortune and money and stuff. Those are the people that she can only really be friends with. And so I think her mom is probably part of that as well. So, yeah. Oh, I saw one here. I want to mention real quick. Uh, S. Kenny, good morning from Tennessee. Love your, I love your channel. Why, thank you. Jamie Southern, hi from Southern California. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Dawes says Megan's dance with John Travolta would be a joy to watch. Shoving him out of the way as she waves her arms about offbeat and does something with her hair. Does, is that like the, the thing that, I, what's her name? Eileen or, um, oh, I can't remember her character's name from the, um, uh, um, oh gosh. Uh, oh, I can picture the actress in my mind, but from Seinfeld, y'all will know. Um, uh, uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus, the, the, the Eileen dance or whatever she does. Um, good morning from Las Vegas, Brittany. This is from Gina. Do you think Netflix will drop Prince Harry and Meghan Markle this year before the contract actually runs out? I am personally of the opinion that yes, yes, I think that Netflix will drop them. So in the, uh, I've explained this in a video, but I'll say this again, is that when it comes to Hollywood, they, they, they were infused with cash during COVID. And this was post like the high of Endgame in the Marvels and stuff. And so the, the box office had one of its best years in like 2019. So 2020, obviously things went down, but streaming went up because the, the rates were down and, and Hollywood could get infused with cash. And so they invested heavily in streaming. And so everybody had to get their own streaming platforms. Those were all ended up being a massive black hole of cash. Like basically every streaming platform is in the red except for Netflix right now. And although Netflix has also financed a lot of its stuff with debt. So everything's in the red. 
And so Harry and Meghan came in at the perfect moment when there was a lot of cash and a lot of interest in just basically throwing money at people and getting product um, from them. That's what they did. So they threw money at Harry and Meghan and said, well, give us give us content. And of course, at the time, everybody knew with Nap with Mexican and everything that they would get something like Harry and Meghan. Now, I think Netflix wanted a juicier version of that, a less scripted and contrived version of that. But they, they got something like that. I think they wanted something more even like keeping up with the Sussexes. They wanted something more in the house of Harry and Meghan. Harry and Meghan couldn't even film their like one on one interviews in their own home, which I still don't understand what. Anyways. Totally different thing. So, um, so th that was the moment Harry and Meghan came in. But things have totally changed now in 2024. Box office had one of its worst years last year. There were like multiple pictures that cost like two to three hundred million dollars that did not even make up their production budget, let alone splitting it with the theaters, let alone marketing. Like billions have been lost. For, like that's why Warner Brothers and, and Paramount apparently are thinking of merging. Um, even though Warner Brothers had the biggest movie the last year is because of all the money lost. So that's all coming together. So <laughs> I realize that's a lot and probably not really here nor there, but it, it, it is, it forms the foundation. So whereas Netflix is doing good, like every other platform in Hollywood, they're reevaluating what they're spending their money on. Harry and Meghan have only one out of three successes. So they're, they're only, I mean, they're technically failing. They have only a 33%. So why would you invest more in them when their content is not performing very well? Like we won't know the official heart of Invictus numbers until later this year, but only, they only had one thing that hit the top 10 and it was the thing that they expected. Everything else they've put money behind for Harry and Meghan have been boring flops. The Heart of Invictus was a hot mess. There were some great moments in there, great bits, but needed a more critical eye and needed an actual storyline. Good documentaries have a good story. That's what makes them good. The, the, it wasn't a good story. So anyways, <laughs> all that to say, I think the contract Netflix will let the contract run out. I don't know why you would get them more money. I don't know why. I don't know why. Okay. So sorry. That was a long explanation. Julie gave a super sticker. Why? Thank you so much. You are so kind. And we also have Steven who also gave a tip. Thank you. Um, three clever blends. Super lattes are now at target stores, but the website warns of lead contamination. The bottom of the bag has a mandatory P 65 warning. <laughs> yeah. And so, and it was weird too, because some outlets were reporting this as a major Megan success. And I was like, no, this is a company success. This is clever success. Megan's an investor, but she's not a reason why it's in Target. Although the timing is convenient because she looks like because she was in the advert right before this was announced that, oh, 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 it was Megan's involvement. And I was like, well, you know, it could have been a factor, but really let's, let's, let's cheer on the people who are actually leading the company and not just Megan Markle, who shows up there for a ridiculous skit um, where she changes her outfit four times for no discernible reason. And so um, if that is true, then that's not great. And honestly, too, like you can get into the stores, but the question is, will it sell? That remains to be seen. Will people buy it if it's in Target? Especially if maybe it would depend on whether or not, whether or not Megan's face is on the cover. Would that help it sell more or less? I don't know. Okay. Stone Royal, thank you so much for the tip this morning. Could it possibly be a Scientology recruiting happening? In the future for the Sussex duo, imagine the second son of the king converting to Scientology. Nothing is free. They obviously bought the award, but at what price? Um, again, I don't think Scientology is a huge factor here, but 110%. Would Scientology love to have Harry and Meghan? Thousand percent. A thousand percent would they love to have Harry and Meghan. Uh, just for the prestige of the royalty and everything. Obviously, Tom Cruise was hobnobbing it with Catherine and William last year for the Top Gun premiere, like, or no, 2023, 2022. It's been a while. Um, that would be like, they would love that. They would love that, but it probably like won't happen. I think it would be too restrictive for Megan really. But I don't know. But the thing is to science, Scientology, there's, there's two different sizes of Scientology. There's the normal average everyday side where you start and you have to pay money and then you have to start paying more and more money and then you have to start paying more and more money. And then you get all the way to the end and you find out like the earth was created by aliens or something stupid. I can't remember quite what it was. Um, or that the, 
Dayans came and put people down. I can't remember. Anyways, watch uh, Lena Remini's show on Scientology because she explains like she got to the end and she's like, what is this? <laughs> she's like, this is so dumb. <laughs> this is like the big secret. Anyways, I can't remember what it was. Anyways, um, but and then there's the side of the celebrity. So certain celebrities, especially like Tom Cruise, like Scientology is almost now formed around Tom Cruise. Like it's a Tom Cruise related company. And so it's just, yeah, it's just crazy. Jan from um, France. Good afternoon from Viva la France. Love your channel. Why, thank you. I enjoyed being in France. And France was one of the places I could sort of kind of understand the language. Kind of, sort of. Not great, but kind of, sort of. Kind of, sort of. Um, so, yeah, that was fun. Uh, Good Five said, new, uh, Royal News Network, do you think Harry Meghan bought auction Diana's dress? I don't know. That'd be interesting, though. I, I saw, like, they're putting up the auction for the stuff in the crown, and there's a part of me that was like, oh, that's super interesting. But more, was, a lot of it was more expensive than I wanted it to be. Um, ASF asked, would you be keen on going to other podcast channels such as Popcorn Palace? Um, perhaps. I mean, I have a, had a couple offers, but I've been just, I just mull it over. I'm just, like, very careful. And honestly, sometimes, too, I, I, I forget I'm not good at keeping up with things. Um, Cheryl says, can you explain what royal grants are? I know you covered it, but I've forgotten. So they give, um, so companies that they really like, they actually give royal grants or warrants to. And so there, there's like a little symbol. So you'll see like the Prince of Wales or the monarch symbol or the Duke of Edinburgh. Those were the three. And so the product, and I don't think I have my boots. Oh, I do have my boots here. Hold on. Um, although you might not be able to see it. Uh, so I will attempt to show these to you. These are Hunter boots. And so you see those inside those are the Royal Warrens. And so they're from, um, the Duke of Edinburgh and her majesty, the queen. So you can't see them very well, but these are Hunter boots. And so these are, you know, kind of officially, you could say recommended by the palace. So anyways, these are awesome. I got these at Ross actually. There was like a Ross and they had a whole bunch of hunter boots for super cheap. And I'm like, well, well, not super cheap, but they're still kind of pricey. But yeah. Uh teacher Ray Samantha says, Hi Brittany, just a question. Who will represent the UK for the coronation of King Frederick of Denmark? No one actually, because they will not be there. So um yeah, that is what we'll that is what we'll see. Uh, unfortunately, it'll be a very small ceremony. Uh Diane Claire says, Brittany, you actually think Harry Megan realized how much they are disliked? actually I don't know <laughs> I really don't I really don't I really don't know how much reality sets in with them okay Yvonne thank you so much for the tip every month Megan Markle doesn't work it makes WME look bad really bad we're getting close to a year since the announcement yes we're getting close to a year nothing nothing has come of this deal I think there was some report that like they kept having things that would get close and then fall through and that's just not a surprise to me in the slightest so anyways, yeah. So just, just crazy. So it is so, so yeah, <laughs> it's so bad. It's so bad. Like seriously. Oh, oh, Stacy. Thank you so much. Our most lovely Brittany is simply doing journalism from a good point of view, noting how selfish people ruin the lives, their own lives when they get greedy a hundred percent. And I think, again, it's something we can all learn from, too, because I always hope a lot of people recognize some of the warning signs here. So we have Di Diamond Park says, good morning, everyone. Hope you all have a great weekend. Love the channel, Brittany. Why, thank you. Okay. Oh, hi, see email from Singapore. Hi from Singapore. It's 1130 here. Love your channel. Why, thank you. Okay. Let's keep going. <laughs> uh, Lauren says, yes, Brittany, you don't understand. It was a convenient place to stay. Yeah, I don't understand. I, I probably missed something earlier that something was referring to. Um, uh, as Steve says, did you hear Talk TV talk about Meghan Markle will never speak to Prince Andrew again? I don't think she spoke to him all that much to begin with. <laughs> I mean, it would have been, oh gosh, goodness gracious is me trying to think would it have been a good idea for oh i mean i would say give him advice 
or like he could have given them advice, but I just don't know if he would have been the best person for them. So. Uh, MD says, uh, there's something to be said for having a smaller house with the family. I grew up in a larger house and my family wasn't closed. My family is, my family is now small and we talk more and spend more time together. That is lovely. Yes. There's different benefits, different things. I know when I was a kid, I was obsessed with having my own bathroom. That was like super exciting. And I know at one point having my own phone too, before that became an issue. Well, I should say a non-issue because now, um, everybody has cell phones. Uh, Martha says, what do you think will be the next paying gig for Harry and Megan? Will they land anything? I don't know. They didn't even get, what did they not get? They didn't even get, um, they didn't even get somebody to pick them up for, um, Archwell stuff and our audio. So I don't know what, like they got to figure out what they're going to pick up next. So I don't know. But we have some international, Katerina, Tony. Um, hello from Tuscany, Italy. I love your commentary. Why, thank you. And we have Luisa Cesar. Cesar. Uh, hola um, from Buenos Aires. Lovely. And you have a the queen of the Netherlands is from, I believe, um, Buenos Aires. Or at least she is definitely from Argentina. So lovely country. And so, yeah. All right, let's keep going here. <laughs> Azuma says, when was the last time Harry flew a helicopter? No idea, no idea. And that's, I think the big thing is for me, it's like, when was he last in a helicopter? I have no idea, but I know Prince William flew last year. I know for sure, because we saw him get out of the pilot seat of the plane, or at least the co-pilot seat. So we, but like he wouldn't be allowed around the controls at all in a helicopter unless he knew what he was doing. Especially in a helicopter, like they had, it was a big one, it had like, a, a passenger side and um, a driver's side. So uh, M. Matthew says, Brittany, hi, Brittany and Miss Pippa. When is the live tomorrow for the Denmark Royals? I have to determine exactly what time it'll be. So we'll have to figure that out. So um, yeah, we'll have to figure that out. So I just want to make sure I, I'll look through the schedule because I pulled up, you can actually pull up like what the media schedule is. And so that's what I'll um, go off things by. Cause that's like very accurate. So let's see. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Karen says, I feel like people don't do their research before giving out awards and they need to look past the hype and PR. Yeah. I think that's what happened. I think they saw dollar signs. They're like, Oh yeah. Prince Harry. That'll get a lot of attention. Not really thinking about the other issues. Like um, like my cat, the cat's uh, name is Karen says Lauren Sanchez, Jeff Bezos' girlfriend is also getting a Legends of Aviation Award. And she's actually a pilot and owns a plane. Like she's actually flown a lot. I think she's actually rather interesting. I watched a bit of a video about her. And so she's actually really, really interesting. So like I see that and that makes sense because she actually flies. And I understand the connection to Jeff Bezos because he... I think does he have a company kind of like SpaceX like Elon Musk like Elon Musk got the award and so like all these he's like people have gotten the actual award and so yeah okay and Bonnie says are any of the awards English Royals going to be in Denmark no um Martina says good afternoon Harry is not a pilot he lives in dream world he does and hello from Sweden All right, let's keep going. And I know there's some things that sugars I'm trying to find the people, but best to just ignore them and um, um, and then block or put them in timeout if you can. Just best to ignore. Easiest way to deal because um, they just like the attention. Okay. Ah. Uh, Terry says perhaps South Park will give us their view on Harry's Bot Award. They probably will. They probably will. <laughs> I'd love that. I'd love that. Um, Jane Buckstens fan. I'm definitely pro UK monarchy because I know a lot about who they are and what they do. Yes. And that helps. And I think, again, there's a lot of questions regarding Harry and Meghan, their intentions, especially with this confusing thing of them trying to be royal and not royal. And so um, it's, it's, it'll be interesting. So it'll be, yeah, it's just kind of a mess. And I think it confuses people. Okay, so 
Judy says, hi, Brittany. Do you think Harry would have left the royal family if it wasn't for Meghan? I feel sometimes feel start, sorry for the bashing he gets. No royal family there to support him. I honestly feel like he, I don't think he would have left without Meghan. I think Meghan was the instigator. Do I think he was unhappy with things sometimes? Yes. But I think a good woman would have encouraged him to enjoy the things that he has not feel like he's been slighted and encourage him and his skills. Harry was actually a pretty good Royal. He was great at connecting with people and it was a really good thing. He was actually, I think qualified to do. And Megan's taken that completely away, been able to just like help him destroy his own reputation where I think somebody else would have been there to go. Let's appreciate what we have and not want things we can't have. And like, learn to live in the excitement of the role we get to have and like find a passion there and keep serving people rather than looking for fame and fortune. Cause I think Megan's own desire for fame and fortune, I think Megan and Harry bring out the worst in each other. And she brought out the worst of his insecurities, his inadequacies, his um, hatred of his own position kind of thing as a spare. I think she really maximized that. It was already there, but she, she was able to draw that out even more. So, okay. Okay. So let's keep going. Um, okay. I did answer that question earlier. And Judith says, if Meghan Markle showed up at the Golden Globes, no one would get her away from the interviewers. Probably not. Yeah, it was really funny when her assistant was trying to move her down the red carpet at the Variety interview. That was really funny. That was really, really funny. Okay, so let's keep going here. Oh, yay. Uh, my cat's name is Karen. 360 likes and a, um, a 1,700 in chat. Hit the like, please. And thank you. Why, thank you. All right, let's keep going here. If I can see. <laughs> Asma says, I love Ricky Gervais. Yes, he is awesome. He is awesome. People get so offended by him. Yes, they did. They got so offended by him. But it's like he was just like saying what's true. He was just saying what's true. Um, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Patty says the spare love hate drama will Eugenie win. Stay tuned for a new TV show. Harry Eugenie Beatrice duke it out for six in line of succession. <laughs> that is funny. That is funny. Okay. Okay. Azuma says when is the trip to Rome? So this is Catherine and William. We don't know. We don't know when the trip to Rome is. It probably will be. They said it's spring sometime. So I don't know exactly when that would be. I'm really hoping it happens around the time of the Spanish state visit to, to the Netherlands. Cause I'm really hoping to maybe mix those two together. Cause I love having the ability to have two, um, two people to be able to, uh, like two events to be able to, 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 um, to attend. Okay. <laughs> Lizzie B says to the unkind person in the chat, thank you for proving us how Megan's sugars act. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's so crazy. Let's keep going here. As he says, do you think um, the aviator word is linked to Archwell with Scientology charity so they can get money? Probably not. Um, so Steven says, and Victus has 148 donors and four fundraisers, about $900,000 raised. I imagine those are some big things. And it's like, it's not that it's necessarily bad, but the thing is, it's like, it wasn't meant to need private donors. That needs private donors is to show how it's starting to fail already. Uh, Tessa says, do you think Megan wants to be a producer on a Suits reboot? She might. That make, that would make sense. I imagine they want her connected with it. If I was Netflix and I was rebooting Suits, I'd be going, well, I want her a part of it somewhere. That's the only thing we can get that we know she's relatively good at. Um, Jane Bucks, would you do, would you research what the Invictus, um, Invictus Games Foundation would profit? Yes. Yeah, so I am planning to one day do a really, hopefully a really cool thing 
we'll see, we'll see how things go. But yeah. Um, B Garzon said, yay, I finally made a live. Congratulations on your growing channel. Why, thank you. Um, my cast name is Karen says, what is going on with Meet Me by the Lake? Last I heard she was hustling for money. Um, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. And again, it's not just that like they're trying to like like the Netflix owns it. So Netflix can pull it. But yeah, we haven't heard anything about where it is in production or anything, just that they have it. When's the next Earth shot? I don't know, but I would imagine the fall of 2024. Don't know where it'll be. We've had one in Asia, North America, obviously in Europe. So um, Australia, New Zealand, or South America would be the most likely options. Hmm. Uh, oops. Kathy said, block share. And after reporting, we all stick together. We've got your back, Brittany. Why, thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Meza says, I love how sugars complain about YouTubers making money off Rachel when Rachel and the Todger make all their money lying and trashing their own families. Yeah. I mean, it's, I enjoy talking about Royals. I enjoy talking about Harry and Meghan. I talked to him, like my family got sick of me talking about Harry and Meghan. So this is my outlet. Like this is, this is fun. I enjoy it because I enjoy history and tradition. And I think that's something to be valued and, I, and obviously family as well. And I don't think Harry and Meghan value any of those things. So that is my perspective. Asma says, will you be coming to London this year? At least once. Yes. Um, Definitely planning on going for trooping. I might go the week earlier to try and get coverage of the Duke of Westminster's wedding. Um, I would love to do that. So hopefully we shall see. Uh, my cat's name is Perrin. Karen. Napoleon was awful. Oppenheimer was a, is a masterpiece. Oppenheimer is great. It's really great. And Matthew says, when is the next tier event? I love the Strathmore appearance. I thought Kate um, and Prince William... Um, Princess of Wales looked amazing in the red dress with the, oh, and Camilla looked amazing in the red dress with the lotus flower. Oh, that was from last year. Um, so next for TR for the appearance for the Brits, I don't know. They used to do two state visits a year. So I would guess one sometime in the spring and then they do one in the fall in November. So April, May, June, perhaps. Um, but I'm not sure exactly when. And when it comes to our next year event, though, that would probably be in Sweden. Sweden is hosting France for a state visit. I think the 30th and 31st of January. This is one that had to be uh, redone from last year because they had it scheduled and they had to take it out. Um, so, so let's go ahead and see. I'm trying to get to the end of the chat here and see maybe if I can... Debbie says, are they living in their mansion? Well, I hope so. That'd be an expensive property not to be living in. Um, so, but also it's an expensive property to live in. So that is definitely, definitely true. As Richard says, Megan doesn't want to give the award. She wants the microphone, probably. Um, so yeah, she enjoys having that microphone for sure. Uh, will anyone from the BRF be attending the wedding celebrations of the Prince of Brunei? I don't think so. I don't think so. I imagine maybe some of the uh, Middle Eastern royals might, um, but I don't foresee any of the major European royals going, but there could be some. I'm just not aware. Uh, Philippa says, uh, lots of people watching. Hit that like button. Great channel. Thank you. Uh, Stacey says, perhaps at the interview, uh, Rachel Megan may have um, said anything to fill the space. It sounded like window dressing. You're talking about the variety interview, yes. Like she said something, but not didn't really say anything at the same time. I mean, that is Hollywood. That is Hollywood. But yeah. <laughs> uh, Jane says, I think Megan would go for Holly Charles's funeral, even if she's not married to Harry. Probably, maybe to help with the kids. I don't know. I don't know. It is. Sad. Catherine said, we talked about this earlier, but on Miss Mary's curtsies, she does the best. She does. She does. So um, let's keep going here. <laughs> uh, I like this one. Natalie says about sugars here. Remember, it takes sugar to attract a fly. That's so good. 
<laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, Alice says, in Norway, our king and queen are crowned in the uh, Nidaros Dome Cathedral in Trondheim. Oh, I'd love to go. I, lo I like, I loved Sweden. I can't wait to go to Norway and Denmark. Really excited. Really, really excited. Okay. <laughs> okay, so. All right. Okay, Chris says, uh, who lives in Sweden? There have been no coronations in Scandinavia for 100 years, just proclamations. Coronations belong to the past. Royal families are more conservative here. Yeah, they are. And I think they have this great laid back quality. That's kind of why I love the Scandinavians. I feel like they're just so laid back. I just feel like they're so laid back. So, so awesome. Um, so... Ah, some people are so responding. I was like, Who's Elaine, I was close. So that's uh, Julia Louise Dreyfus's character on Seinfeld. I love her in Veep. That's probably one of my favorite shows. Um, love that show. It's, it takes a little bit to get into the first season, a little bit more rough. And then it kind of, it's, it's, it makes fun of American politics very well. Um, Mary says, these people asking about Doria are all related to Megan's older sister. What's her name? I can't stand Megan, but her sister is worse. Yeah, I'm not totally a fan of any of the Markles, really. Um, I do feel sorry for her dad, but I mean, I just think there's just not great things going on all around. Um, <laughs> uh, Tina says a comedy where you think everyone likes you because you married a prince. Julia would be hysterical. That would be hysterical. Yeah. Just because you're married to a prince doesn't, um, doesn't want, uh, um, doesn't mean everybody's going to love you. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Ritz says, what happened to the studio that was built in the custom built in the mansion? Oh yeah. Money down the toilet. Yep. I would love to have that. Have a nice, see, I have this and it's not bad, but it could be better. Uh, Kathy says, Brittany, I really appreciate your videos. You're so knowledgeable and truthful. Why? Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Margaret says, Brittany, if Megan's to present Harry with the award, then they might as well send it via FedEx and save the cost of private jet and the embarrassment of having to attend the ceremony. Yeah. Cause it would take them a while to get, like they could fly a jet. Like some of like the Kardashians are like flying jets to like, just avoid the traffic in LA. That's how bad LA is. LA is awful, awful traffic. Um, LA has awful, awful traffic. Um, okay. So <laughs> Savannah says our documentary is currently 217 on Netflix list. Yeah, that ain't good. That ain't good. That ain't good at all. And again, it's not that that would be probably okay for what the content was, but the thing is may Netflix is going to pay them supposedly upwards of a hundred million dollars to produce things. And if you're looking, if you're going to pay somebody a hundred million dollars, then you better, well, honestly put them um have them be like ha they need to be producing really really good quality <laughs> uh so as it says how is better up doing not at all i have no idea i nothing that i've heard about that has generally been good um, Jonner says, Hey, Brittany, have you seen the latest puppies featured in us uh, magazine and in touch? Um, probably I do have the, um, the, the U S uh, us weekly magazine with Harry and Megan on the cover with their Hollywood comeback. And they also have the Catherine one. I buy them because not really because I want to, <laughs> I buy them just because I think it's good to have like a physical record and read something. Um, I think that's really, really helpful to just evaluate what they're saying. And yeah. Um, so let's keep looking to see, ah, uh, Pia gave a wave. Hello. <laughs> um, Jen, Jan, Jan says, uh, Brittany, how envious is Meg, Meg Z, re Catherine getting her own royal warrant and is she the Duchess of discount codes? Yes. Yes. Uh, kind of like that. 
<laughs> she would be very, I mean, it's just such a cool thing. It's just such a cool thing. <laughs> a table is $30,000 at Living Legends Award is suggesting that Harry and Meghan bought a table. Yeah, like they, like the whole thing is basically a fundraiser. So, uh, Michelle says, looking super pretty today, Brittany. Why, thank you. Thank you. Especially after I had to take like a mid morning nap right before because I got up super early um, with the dogs. Like two dogs is fun. They like fought a little bit right before bed. It was gangbuster time. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's see. Um, would it be a uh, first, uh, would be Henry and Rachel for first names. I wish like for me, for Harry, if he was going to do a rebrand, I would tell him use his actual first name. Don't go by Harry anymore. Go by Henry. Go by Henry. Um, Cause that's a little bit more official. Uh, Philippa says, are you still drinking Woodard's? Um, I'm kind of running out of it. So today I had like something that my mom had given me for Christmas. And so I need to get some more Woodard's. I had like put a, a, a cart together and I need to order some cause I love it. And it's really good. It's so good. It's so good. I just can't believe it. <laughs> um, Natalie says, I mentioned this award to my husband and my husband was in the Swedish army and his opinion is to have an active flying credential. You need to do at least a thousand hours annually to stay active. Yeah. He's so not active. Like even if he got it, he's definitely not active anymore. Definitely not. Yeah. Wildcat Wilma says Lauren Sanchez flies a helicopter and owns her own helicopter and filming company. Yeah. I mean, she's like, she's, she was a single mom too. So I think she kind of worked her way up. I mean, you can get that. Um, so let's see. Okay. <laughs> if you review the award right up, Harry has all of William's achievements. There is nothing listed that Harry actually did on his own. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, he's so jealous of his brother. I remember in his book, one of like his, his most exciting moments was when he had a higher military rank with than William for a brief half second. That was like his most exciting moment. Fire says, how is Pippa doing? Did she ever find that bone in the couch? No, <laughs> it is lost to the couch. So Pippa, I did this video for the members because Pippa has these special treats that she likes to hide. And it's very, very cute. And she was super like fussy about the couch. And I was like looking over there and she was like sniffing, putting her little nose in the corner. And she's like, my bones here, my bones here. And I was like, well, are they in the couch anymore, honey, buddy? I can't get it out. It was very cute. So cute. Um, and so, um, yeah, I haven't found that. But when I give them to her, she, she goes around and she hides them uh, like in the couch and blankets and stuff. Thank goodness I haven't like washed any of them. But most of the laundry is upstairs and she's mostly downstairs. So. Yeah, but it is, it's really funny. She gets very Twitter-pated about it. It's very entertaining. And it keeps her busy if I need to keep her occupied. <laughs> um, Jenna says, Harry would do himself a big favor if he turned down the award and said others were more worthy. Yeah, 110%. 110%. Um, if he did that, that would be awesome. Heidi says, will we see the Sussex kids this year? I don't know. Again, I've always said Harry and Meghan keep the kids private. That's totally fine. Just don't talk about them much. It just seems really, really weird when you make everything about the kids and then we, and about you being parents and then we never see you parent. Um, it's just from a branding perspective that just doesn't work. That just doesn't work. Um, if you're going to make that a huge part of what you're doing, then your kids need to be part of the equation or you need to do something else. Um, cause Hollywood people, they are parents and they talk about being parents from time to time, but I feel like they don't make their whole image about being a parent, a at least in the public sphere. And that's the difference with Harry and Meghan. Um, Lizzie says, will the future Duchess of Westminster wear a tiara? Yes, she will. Yes, she 100% will. Okay, uh, Gigi says, did you report on Princess of Wales' birthday? I did mention it on Twitter and shared some of my pictures. And, and I also, um, what did I do? I also did a whole video on the tiara she's worn on my fashion channel. So that was fun. That was a lot of fun. I really looked at the, um, whatchamacallit, Cartier Halo much. So, yeah. Okay. 
So I just wanted to try to get to the end this time. <laughs> and Niren says, why doesn't Harry Chopper them to Beverly Hills if he is a living legend after all? You would think, right? Right? <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, Mading says, Brittany, I saw your lovely selfie with the Princess of Wales and brought it to add to my cycle of um, PC wallpapers. Hope you don't mind. It was such a great pick. Why, thank you. I was super thrilled. I was super thrilled. Um, there was this really pushy German guy behind me, but I managed, I managed to get that. Um, Tanya says, have you cre considered creating a group chat for your members so we can communicate directly and privately with you? Yeah, I've thought about creating like a Discord server or doing Telegram, something like that. I think that would be um, I think that would be an awesome thing. Okay. Becky says live stream every other Thursday for members. Just had one two days ago. Yep. And so they are a lot of fun. I enjoy them because I get to do some more, I get to talk more about the questions. <laughs> Sometimes I hear I, I talk too long and then I have to like go through them quickly. Crystal says, Do you really think they will go to the aviation award after the backlash? Yes, a hundred percent. Again, they're desperate to be seen, desperate to be seen being important. And so they'll go. Um, so <laughs> Solar Flare says, Megan burned herself. You don't go around secretly taping everyone's conversations and expect everyone, anyone to hire you. Harry and Megan will sell your secrets. Yes, and it's not only that they're recorded, but that they actually just keep sharing stories. And so it's just like they have, they obviously have no uh, a, a discretional ability. So, um, Shani says, hi, Brittany. Do you think Megan is going to have a um, Travolta moment to copy Diana's picture? Somebody asked that, and I think if she could, she probably would. She probably would. Um, so we'll probably just start slowing down here a bit. Um, and so, like, um, I just did want to show you guys something real quick because I have this P.O. box, and I keep forgetting about it. And I went there the other day, and somebody had sent me nail polish for Halloween. And so that's why my nails are all different colors because I tried every single color. And I was just like, I just want to show you that because I just thought that was super funny. And I do like, like Halo Taco, like what I tried wasn't bad. I just thought it was so funny. And then I just wanted to show you guys too. So Anna Lucia, who I partner with, I, they sent me this book. So this was like um, the legend, the leadership and vision of a modern monarch for King Charles, which is really beautiful. And so, and then their bit is in here. And then it just has some stuff too about like Charles. Let's find Charles and everything for Kings. So I'm super excited to put this on my shelf with all my other books. So, so, so pretty. And it's like so official. It says from St. James's Palace. I don't know why, but that tickles me. <laughs> um, Lizzie B said, what's your P.O. box? I don't make that public just because there's just so many weirdness out there. But I will go ahead and like I may make it um, available to like members or something. I'm not sure. Just because there's been so much weirdness, so much craziness with people that I've dealt with, like even the, like yesterday and stuff. So try to keep that stuff really low key if possible. So guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you really enjoyed it. Um, and let's see, did I miss anybody over here? Oh, I'm, did I miss this? I may have missed this. Um, so Steven, I'm so sorry if I missed this. Um, Steven says, um, 12th of May, 2023, Clever raised 2.78 million to scale up to target contract. Megan, Air Venture Partners, and Silva Ventures are the three investors. Why, thank you so much. I really appreciate you letting me know that. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I doubt Megan contributed that much. And it'll be interesting to see too, once you get into the stores, it's like extra money that is more difficult. So thank you so much. Steven, I'm so sorry I missed your... Um, missed your um, comment there initially. Thank you so much for the tip, guys. So I appreciate you all so much. Thank you so much. You guys lift my spirits. And I hope you have a great Saturday and the rest of the weekend with your family and friends. So we will all talk next week. Bye. Oh, Julie, first time here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a great, great Saturday or Sunday. <laughs>